today I will show you how to create a series of mannequin figure drawings and then add watercolor to bring your artwork to life. You will need a wooden figure mannequin or you can find websites that you can draw from and I will list those throughout the video and you need a piece of paper and something to draw with. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. First, you wanna be very familiar with how to draw the human figure. I will be using this website, setpose.com, to create a variety of different poses for my mannequin figures. If you've never drawn the figure before, make sure to practice that first just in a basic standing pose, and then you can play around with this website to set up more dynamic postures for your figure drawing. Good old-fashioned wooden mannequins, also a great drawing tool, especially for those standing more stationary poses. If you've never practiced drawing human proportion, check out this link for my video on how to draw the human body using basic proportions. I'm using a colored pencil in this video because I wanted something a little livelier than just a pen. And with a pencil, I tend to get obsessive with details. Right now I'm breaking down the human body using just a random colored pencil. And the pose that I have my mannequin in has the arms outstretched. For each one that I draw, I will put a image of my mannequin, um, what I'm referencing. And again, if you've never drawn the human body before, proportion is key. So the human head is an oval, and then you're gonna draw a semi-triangular shape for the torso, and that needs to be twice the length of the human head. The next area is the pelvis, which I like to call the Batman bikini because the word pelvis just makes me feel a little uncomfortable, maybe because I teach high school. And then I'm drawing legs from there. Believe it or not, the legs take up half the human body. So this pose is pretty easy because it's pretty proportional or it's pretty standard. The only change here are the outstretched arms. The legs are pretty much exactly that practice one that I did um, focusing on the parts of the body. The elbow is the halfway point of the arm and the knee is the halfway point of the leg. Then I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna use a second color and my whole idea here, my whole concept is kind of like a collage of different figure drawings exploring different dynamic poses and expressions. This figure I'm using red just because I wanna mix up my color scheme. And you can see I always start with the head, then I do the torso, then I do the Batman bikini. And that really stays pretty much the same unless your body is in a half or three quarter view, which I will be doing one of those um, in just a minute. And so the legs, I stopped at the knee and I wanted this one to kind of have a sad look like pink Charlie Brown with its head down. Um, it kind of just looks like it's standing. If I would have tilted the head more, it would have gotten that kind of sad vibe I was going for. But still, it's a nice contrast because the art outstretched arms kind of crosses across crosses across the top of my composition and this one's just kind of a neutral standing position going back in and adding my legs and then I'll add my feet from there this artwork is really just a study of the human body in motion I'm using color very liberally I'm just using it wherever I want however I feel to amplify my figure so I'm putting a little bit of red in the first drawing that I did and you'll see me repeat that theme throughout I'm going to be adding different colors and really playing around with my color palette since this is a abstract artwork in the sense that I'm not trying to like depict them as they actually look because it's a mannequin. It's a simplified human form. So I'm just having a little bit of fun with color to bring it to life. Now I'm moving on to one of my favorites and that is a seated pose. That is definitely leveling up a little bit because my figure is turned to the side and they're not standing. They're seated with their legs outstretched. So with my students, we did a lot of practice before we started on our final watercolor paper and I saved the seated and crouching and sitting poses for last we practiced lots of one minute time sketches which they loved that sarcasm by the way um, who love who doesn't love being timed when drawing and I saved the more complicated poses for last and a seated one can be more complicated depending on how involved your legs are crossed your arms are um, the perspective would be different depending on the movement that your figure is doing I like this pose because it has one leg outstretched and one leg in front. And you can see that I am crossing over my figures in the back. So this uh, figure is kind of in the front of the composition. I am not drawing them as they would exist if the laws of physics were present. I'm thinking more of like a whole collaged image. And if I were to do this again, I would draw more figures 
more overlap and make it almost abstract to where it's hard to see where one figure starts and the other one ends. Didn't quite get that far with this one because it's more of just a practice, like what do I want my students to do? Let me try it out. So if I were to do this again, I would definitely go that route. I'm gonna go ahead and mix and match my colors again, making sure that each one has kind of its own voice, but also the colors relate. In the end, you'll see though, they pretty much all turn out the same, which is fine because unity with this drawing is, for this artwork is totally fine because it is all the same kind of simplified mannequin human form. So this figure, I'm going to draw kind of behind the rest of them. He's a little bit taller and I wanna play around with the arms a little bit. And so I found a pose that I really liked on the website I mentioned before, setpose.com. And that's such a cool website because if you don't have a wooden mannequin, it just allows you to play around with all the different poses that a mannequin can and can't do. Like my mannequin can only stand, but with these, you can do poses like Spider-Man. You can do seated um, yoga poses. And so that website is really great for at home and in the classroom. Just be warned, there are some props, including some knives, some bow and arrows, and a gun or two. So if you're doing this in the classroom, heads up, that is one of the options. You can see I'm measuring for the legs here because this guy is pretty tall and he's going behind the guy that's leaning um, seated on the ground. So the legs kind of disappear behind the torso of that last figure that I drew. Um, I really do like the expression of this one. And again, if I were doing this again, I would try and tell a story with my figures. I would either do all like action athletes, maybe a superhero theme, maybe they're ballet dancers, or try and tell a story with each figure like they're in a crowd reacting to something or something is happening and have each figure have a slightly different pose to reflect their expression. I did four drawings and I had my students do three to five on their watercolor paper. And the reason we use watercolor paper is because we are going to paint to create interesting areas of color. I think that watercolor looks really great with colored pencils. And so what you see me doing now is experimenting with a watercolor pencil. Let me zoom in. Watercolor pencils are great because you can add color just like you would with a watercolor pencil or just like with a regular uh, colored pencil, excuse me. And then if you add water to it, you can pull it like it's watercolor paint. So it's really fun to work with. I do not have a class set of watercolor pencils, so my students have some they can use, but we'll mostly be adding just washes of watercolor. But you can see when I add paint to these areas and pull it, you can do shading, modeling, and you can just kind of do light washes of color that way. One good thing about using watercolor is it's pretty inexpensive. So I'm using a praying set of watercolors I have in my classroom, but you can use any style of paint that you have. Um, you can even do this with watered down acrylic, but watercolor again on watercolor paper just makes a lot of really fun, interesting areas. And because I use a lot of warm, like reds and browns in my drawing, yes, there's some blues and greens too. I wanted to contrast that and use some blue paint to kind of fill in, but not all the way, my figures. I love how the red shows through the blue paint. I think that's so interesting and fun to look at. I'm not really focusing on shading. I'm just kind of filling in the areas, but I am trying to make some of the areas of paint a little bit darker, like in the areas that maybe, you know, connect the joints, like the hip, the neck, that sort of thing. And I am trying to leave a little bit of white space um, to create a highlight. I didn't think about this until now, but I'm doing my figures blue, so it's almost like the blue man group. I don't know if you're, you might not know that reference if you're younger than me, but this is making me give, or this is giving me blue man group vibes here. And I'm just gonna use the same color blue, a little bit of violet in some of them to fill in some washes of color. Let's speed things up to double the speed I actually painted. So if it looks like I'm spazzing out, I did speed up the time. Since I'm using just the same couple colors and just filling in the body, um, I did try out a little bit of like a green turquoise there. Um, and I'm kind of doing the same thing, basically filling it in, leaving a little bit of white, and then going back to darken some areas. After it dries, I'm gonna go back and add another darker layer too to give it a little bit more contrast. Because I really loved how that red popped against the blue, I'm gonna add some yellow to the background to see how that will look when I paint the background. Because I did mostly, well, I only use cool colors when painting my figures, I wanna provide a contrast in the background by using a mixture of my favorite warm colors, lots of yellows, lots of oranges that blend into red. So I'm kind of creating some lighting here. I'm gonna add some lines for drama um, just to give the background a little bit of visual interest. And then I'm gonna paint over with orange this yellow spot here so you can see how it 
blends into the color scheme but also gives it a nice pop as well. I think that orange looks really nice. Now keep in mind, this is a finished work of art, yes, but I'm also using it as a figure study. Um, so it's going to be pretty loose. My style with this is like quick sketchy lines, loose uh, textured lines in the background, and then the paint is very loose as well. I'm gonna add a few more scratchy lines in the background. I'm not trying to contrast here. I could use green and that would pop really well, um, but I'm just trying to add a few little lines that give the figures energy, kind of directs my eye to like the tops of their head and areas that I want uh, people to look. I did speed things up a little bit here, so if it looks like I'm moving fast, I did speed things along. And after I'm done adding these fun pencil lines, which you can do, I'm doing regular colored pencils. You can totally do this with watercolor pencils too. Just keep in mind when you add water, it will blend out some of that line work. You can go back and add it after your paint is dry or you can use it with blending. It's totally up to whatever your style and goal is with this. In the background, I'm gonna stick with my warm colors. So what I'm doing is adding a lot of water, which is called a wash, and then I'm doing large areas of the wash in the background, kind of overlapping into those spaces. One thing you wanna keep in mind is you can blend wet on wet. So you see I'm adding orange on top of the yellow, and those two colors will blend together. One thing you might be noticing that I'm doing, and I am doing this purposefully, is I am not keeping the figures completely separated from the warm colors of the background. In a space, you would not be separate from your environment. So what I mean by that is if these figures were real and they were standing in a room and the room had an orange glow, even if they were blue from the blue man group, that orange would get into them as well. Like as far as reflected light on their skin, um, you wouldn't have like a completely separate, the person is blue, the background is orange. There would be overlap of colors inside the people and there'd be a little bit of blue in the background as well. So if you see my colors kind of blending together, that is purposeful. I don't want it to happen too much, but I do want those color relationships to not be separate from each other, but really give my artwork harmony by connecting to each other. I want this overlap here to be brighter, darker, something like that. This negative space between the two figures is really interesting to me. And this central figure with their arms outstretched, I wanna create kind of a sense of importance and emphasis as if if this is maybe the central figure it quite literally is in the center so that makes sense and so this red is really fun it's making me think of like fire um, something along those lines I'm a little hesitant to add black but I think I'll play around with it a little bit if done correctly um, it can enhance a work of art sometimes black with watercolor can muddy your colors so just kind of be careful as you work with that I slowed things back down again and let's add a little bit of black in that red area. I can already tell I'm not happy with how much red seeped into the face of the central figure. I don't hate it. I just know when it dries, I'm going to go back in with some blue and go back in and add some darker lines. And I know I've used this brand of watercolors quite a bit, so I know this black, if done correctly, if I spread it out, I know it looks kind of scary right now. It's not going to dry as jet black as this, so I do have some safety in, in knowing that because I have experimented with this type of paint a lot. Um, so if you haven't, maybe do some color swatches before you commit to your final paper. And just know in art, there's really nothing you can't fix. Um, this is a quick study. It's studying the human form. Yes, it's a finished work of art in one way, but I also know that I'm gonna be using this as a guide because we're gonna be doing figure drawing next where we draw people from direct observation in real life. When this dries, it, you can't tell now, it makes this really beautiful gray and the red that pops behind it is very fun and interesting to look at. So I'm gonna blend this out a little bit with water and make sure it's not so dark. And then you'll see in just a couple minutes or just in a second uh, when it's dried and it's the next class period, the next day, it looks completely different. I let my artwork dry and you can see how much the paint has faded. I'm taping this down because it really bothered me how crooked uh, my artwork ended up in the last section of the video. So I'm taping it down so it doesn't move. And my goal for this, and I knew this from the start, I love watercolor, but I always let it dry and go back and add some more detail. I'm playing around with this gold Prismacolor colored pencil. It's not showing up quite as much as I would like. So I think I'm actually gonna go back um, with black and see if I can figure out a way to really make the figure stand out. I really out. love how the red connects the background to the figures and just how it pops over that blue. I think that's a really satisfying color combination. So I'm gonna do a little bit more drawing, more mark making with that. Then I'm gonna move on to the black. 
you can see how intense it gets really quickly with that black. I was thinking I might go in with a very small paintbrush and do black paint, but I think that the, um, or even like a black drawing pen, I love doing that to watercolor. I love doing washes of color and having these moments that kind of happen naturally. And then going back in and tighten it up with a pen. I'm gonna stick to the colored pencil because the results are gorgeous. It's so contrasting and everything else is watercolor and colored pencil, so I might as well stick to my theme. I'm gonna speed things up here because I am just repeating the mark making that I've done previously to bring out more emphasis. If you're doing this yourself, you can pick any color combination that you would like. I have done this before where I've used a more natural color scheme and I was a little bit more thoughtful with my expressions. I'll put these images here. These are slightly different in style. I did it with a drawing pen and then added watercolor washes for emphasis, shadows, and movements. And I made a series of these in my sketchbook as studies for some clay figures that I was making last summer. So now that everything is dry, I'm going back in with my black to really enhance those lines and just make each figure stand out. Let's speed things up a little bit since this is all a repeat of the same figures, same drawings that I've done before. This step is optional and it could be done with a drawing pen, but I just think when watercolor dries, I like to go back in and add layers of the same colors I used before or brighter variations of that color to make it stand out. As I had mentioned, I was a little disappointed in how that central figure's head kind of went into the background a little too much. So a little pop of blue really does help make it stand out. And the second layer will dry darker, so I'm thinking shadow and light and where I want my darker areas to be. Let's speed things up again. One thing that's great about working with watercolor is you can do so many layers and make it darker, brighter, more opaque as you layer, or you can keep it really loose and wispy and just use something as simple as a drawing pen, a black colored pencil, something to make your lines pop. Knowing when you're finished is always the artist struggle, so I would say work on it at least two different sessions with your watercolor so you can at least layer once, hang it up somewhere and take a step back and look at it and ask yourself, do you have the emphasis you want or the areas that you want to stand out contrasting? And are you happy with your relationship between your figures and your background? Let's take a look at some of the figures that my students were working on. And these are not finished. These are the first stages of adding color and adding line. And they use the website setpose.com as well, which I have found to be just a really great resource when your class sizes are huge like mine or maybe you don't have a drawing mannequin at your house. This is such a fun and creative way to study the human body in its simplified form. After practicing mannequin styles, the next thing would be drawing from life an actual human trying to focus a little bit more on realism. That is definitely a step above, and this is a great way to learn the figure drawing technique with a very simplified shape. Thank you for sticking around and making art with me, and if you're interested in more drawing tutorials, check these out. Find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado to see what my students are up to in my classroom, and find my website thatartteacher.com for full-length free lesson plans, rubrics, and student examples.